Hi, welcome to Media Unlocks audio series. This is the last and final segment and we are on location. We're gonna take everything that we've learned about microphones, mixers, cables, everything, and we're gonna put them to good use here. We've got two actors with us that are going to do lines and we're going to mic them up. We're gonna talk about how we're gonna mic them up. We're gonna show you how we're gonna do it. And what we've got down here is a four channel recorder. We're gonna be recording three tracks today. One channel will be a lav on him. The second channel will be a boom on her. And the third channel is my lav that I have on me. We are going to have a radio mic for the lav. Mine is direct wired. And over here we have David on the boom. So as we start to do the real world recording, we'll demonstrate where to put the microphones. So stay tuned. Okay, so as we were determining how to put microphones, which microphones to put on who, I could love both actors, or I could boom both actors, uh, many, many combinations. So what we've decided to do today is to put a lav on him. He's got a button down shirt. We're gonna plant the lav underneath here so that we don't see it. With her, she's got a lot of hair on the front here hanging over her blouse, so what we'll do is just boom her only, but our lav options are to stick a lav. I could put it right here. I don't really wanna put it front and center up that high. I want it down a little bit. I could also put it in her hair or put it on her glasses and hide it, tape it in there. Uh, all, th all three of those would take a little bit of time to do. So if you're in a hurry somewhat, we just boom. Now, he's, as we're testing this, we're gonna determine if we are going to boom just her or boom both of them. So as, as we do this, you'll hear the difference. So I'll have David move the boom in between them. I'll have David move the boom over her and we're gonna see what is the best way to do it. Now, remember, we do have him lobbed and we talked about lavalier as being on the body and kind of sounding unnatural that if we can get by with a boom on both of them, that would be good. But they're gonna, going to be engaging in a conversation and it may require the boom to move back and forth too quickly. So we have to make that decision. Another thing to do is if you have extra people on the set is to boom both of them and have one boom over him, one boom over her, and then you've got the natural sound. But what we're also fighting today is we are on a street corner and we kind of picked it on purpose so that we could have you could hear all the problems that you have on a set outside. We have workers down the street, they're, uh, they're uh, renovating a building, so we're hearing buzz saws. We've got people walking back and forth, car doors opening and closing, street sweepers going by, coal trucks, you know, regular cars, and occasional dog barking. So we have to kind of deal with those. So, Sometimes it's not bad to have that exterior sound if it's going to be a scene that is going to carry for quite some time. But if we run into the situation where there's gonna be lots of cuts back and forth, that background sound can kill you in your edit because you may have a car going by on the A shot and on the B shot the car isn't there. And when you make that edit, the car just all of a sudden disappears with a butt edit. So what we're gonna to try to do and when we do it for real, is wait for the cars not to be going by. And there's not a lot we can do about background sound. Now, the boom, as we talked about, is highly directional. It is uh, going to be overhead and it's gonna be focused on the voice, but you do get exterior surround sound into it. So there's a, over behind David, who is booming, we have a factory over there and we're hearing the, the fans on top of the building. That's gonna be a problem. On the other side, directly 180 degrees are the workers over there. So some of it, it will bleed into the mic. With a lav mic, most mics that we use on the lav are omnidirectional. That means they pick up all directions. But once we place it on the body, it sort of becomes dire more directional. My back, my body is blocking anything behind me, so sometimes it helps to put the person's back towards most of the ambient sound that is causing the problem, and it blocks a lot of it out. It isn't always possible. I mean, we today we are looking at the visual aspect of the shot and having 
uh, this piece of artwork and the, the foliage behind in order to determine what the shot is. So the sound people can't always say, this shot isn't gonna work, turn us back towards the traffic and the camera operator says, it's gonna be a terrible looking shot. If we had our way, we would have a roof over us and we'd be in, you know, in, in the quiet and we'd just say green screen it. But we can't do that. So this is, uh, the first thing I'm gonna demonstrate is attaching the lav to the actor. So what I have here is the Sankin COS 11D. This may be out of the price range of a lot of people, but we did bring this up. I have a little vampire clip on here that I'm going to attach on the inside. I have the rest of the cable and I have a, somewhere here, I've got a Sennheiser. This is part of the EW100 G3 series. I have the receiver over by my recorder and this will be a belt pack that will go on him and allow him to move freely. And as an audio person that's going to plant this, I've gotten ready and put a piece of couple of tape um, on my pants so that I can grab it and tape the cable down. So the first thing we're going to do is drop this down the back of a shirt. The next thing I'll do is plant this in an area that I will be able to get to it. Okay, so we've got this on the inside, like so. I'm going to take a piece of tape and create a blimp or balloon over this. Take and start folding backwards and make a triangle. Now, it's, it's hollow inside. I would take this and put on this side of the mic, not blocking anything, and this will help keep it up off everything. So now from the outside it looks very natural. The other piece of tape is to create a broadcast loop. So this cable, the fact that it's inside, under clothing, in, uh, rubbing against the skin, cr transmits noise through the wire cabling to the mic head. So I'm going to create a shock absorber right here. I'm not going to loop and tie it. I'm going to tape it down. It also, if he moves around, it gives a little bit of play. But the fact that these two pieces of wire touch each other, cancel each other out. It's called a broadcast loop. So I'll tape this over like this on the inside and hide it. And I know we're gonna see a little bit of cable here. In the field, I would probably obsess over this a little bit more and if you can turn around, Brian. And I'll just plug this in. And this is off. So now I want to turn it on. When you unplug or plug in microphones, you always want to shut off the device. So at this point, I'm going to watch the meter on here and have Brian tell me what he had for breakfast this morning. Uh, I had an egg sandwich with some milk. That sounds delicious. It's excellent. Did you put yogurt on top? Greek no, yogurt? No. It's good suggestion though. <laughs> okay. So at this point I'm gonna clip this on his belt, hide it, hope he doesn't turn around. Um, actually if he's gonna be facing that way, I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna switch it out a little bit. 
So hopefully at this point, if he's turned this way, we won't see the belt pack. You're gonna be facing each other, right? Yes. Okay. And next step is we do some tests. So let me talk a little bit about our setup before we move on to the mics. Just as reference, we have a master recorder over there. That's the 5D. And into it, you see an eighth inch cable that leads all the way over to the output of my recorder. My particular recorder has RCA out. They are consumer level, they're minus 10, uh, and they're actually 14 decibels less than pro level, line level. So the output is lower. We're leading into the 5D, that's a Mark II. We've got the level turned all the way down, and it is distorting, but it is a reference copy only. Remember, the audio in these cameras, most of them, are really not useful. So in this case, we have a lowered level going in just so David, when he edits this, he can see the waveforms and match them up a little bit easier than we were doing before. So you should have one master camera doing that if possible. If you don't, that's fine. Just use the camera mic. On the 5D Mark III's, we have found that you can, this works perfectly. Use consumer level out, bring it in, set it to manual audio and turn your input all the way down to plus one, that's one notch above zero, and it seems to work. Now the next update of Canon software may blow that out of the water, we don't know, but at this point in time it's working. So what we have now, we have a lav on him in his omnidirectional, and as he faces her, the conversation from his lav might actually pick up both people. She would be lower in level, but oftentimes we find that a lav mounted on someone when they're within two to three feet of each other actually picks up both people. Sometimes you can get by with one. Overhead we have a lav on her. We talked about options on loving her or not. Today we're not going to. So first thing we're going to do is let's test it. Lav on him, boom on her. And David come in just a little bit over here and he's going to go out of frame. And one thing that the boom operator should ask the camera operator is frame. And that means, am I in the, the frame above? So we're gonna assume you're seeing the boom in the shot right now, because that's what we want. But we might be cropped. Um, actually, we might be cropped right there because Brian's a lot taller than Aaron. So, so we might be, have to have the boom all the way up there to stay out of the shot, and that looks pretty good. So let's do a, a rehearsal of the lines. How's it going, Aaron? Ah, pretty good, Brian. Yeah, I saw you in that play last night. You uh, did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I don't know. It was kind of fun being in the play. I don't really know about it, though. You don't seem too enthused about it. Yeah, I mean, it's fun, but I mostly did it just because my friend was in it. Really? OK, cut. So. David, how does it sound in the boom? Fabulous. Is it clean? Absolutely. Okay, so this next one, let's try um, just lav only. So David, you can relax, take your boom down, and let's do, just pick up where you left off. You wanna do that? Sure. sure. Okay, and this is from continuation to pick up, see if his lav picks up her. Action. Well, you know, I haven't seen you in that play last night. I mean, I've seen a lot of students kind of come and go, and it seemed like you'd be one that could kind of keep that going. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's everyone else wants me to do it, you know. Friends want me to do it, my mom wants me to do it. But I don't know if it's what I want to do. You know, I like just hanging out with friends and partying and stuff like that. Uh, All right, so David was listening. How did, how did, were we able to hear her okay? Was the level lower? Yeah. Okay, so in post, you would have to bring her level up and then bring it down. So we risk that background noise going up and down, up and down, up and down. So this is why we want to try to get isolation mics on both of them. Third test, let's try the boom overhead between them. And move, let's see, you're gonna have to move over a little bit and then come up more, more, more up. Okay, let's try that. The farther away that you move a boom, the more spread that it has. The closer you move it, the more narrow it is. So if he's right over top of her, it's gonna have 
it's gonna kind of come out as a cone. It's just gonna catch her. The farther up it is, the more that cone will hit their voices. Also, you risk more exterior ambience coming into the mic the farther away it is, but to catch both voices, that's the way to do it. And oftentimes we do use one boom for two voices. A lot of times it works great. So let's pick up um, from where you left off and action. Partying? Really? Yeah, I don't know. Acting just, acting just seems like so much effort, you know? I have to go to school and go to all those rehearsals, learn your lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understand. Sometimes partying can be a rite of passage for younger people. Yeah. But it's fun. David, how, how'd it sound? Were you able to hear both, hear both of them? It's a moon made of cheese. <laughs> so you weren't. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> what about the car going by? That too. Yes. Okay. So, so we're already. We we would have probably stopped to take with the cars, but they're they're coming by pretty frequently. About every 30 to 45 seconds, we've got cars coming by, and that's what we wanted. We wanted to demonstrate that we hear this. Now, this is no cars, and this is what it sounds like. So let's actually do the full take if we can. So we've just wrapped up the actual take that you're going to see. So what we did when we actually were setting up, David had the boom and we reframed the master camera and he brought the boom in until the camera operator said he was in frame, that he could see the boom and then he pulled it out, just out of frame. And then as he's holding the boom, he is ta taking the point of the boom and putting it on a distant object and saying, if I go below that, then I know I'm in frame. So you, he's using a distant object as a point of reference. It could be, if you're inside, it can be a, a corner, upper corner of a room. In this case, it was probably the roof line of a building in the distance because his eyeballs are not at the end of this boom, it's he's over there and he's having to manipulate the boom and use headphones to listen to see where it sounds best. That's the best way to set a boom in and out of frame is to listen and have someone else from another vantage point watching to see when it comes in frame. It's impossible to see at that angle where you are with the boom. You have to rely on other people to help you and use your ears. Always, always, always use your ears. So we've learned that bringing a mic in close to the source, don't rely on a distant mic with the camera, bring it in to the source, get as close as you can, isolate each individual sound, and then when you edit and post everything together, you're gonna to have a much more successful end product. So feel free to email questions to me. I'm here to help. My email is neil3 at dxaudio.com. That's on your screen right now, n-e-i-l-3 at dxaudio.com. Shoot me an email, ask questions, and I really thank everyone for watching through this entire series, and we hope to do more for Media Unlocked.